Hello, everybody. Welcome to Fast Money Football. And the first ever Premier League winter break is finally over. And after a brief hiatus, we're back. We got Premier League midweek action on this Tuesday. And Sarah, if I told you, right, on February 8th, Newcastle against Everton is going to be a relegation battle, what would you say? I would say, I mean, now I agree. This is arguably going to be the best game of the day of the week, maybe the toughest. This is going to be this is going to be a battle. I don't know where to go with this one. To think that Everton is in a relegation scrap in February in the Premier League is crazy. But this is here. We, this is where we are. They've hired Frank Lampard. By the way, I should probably introduce my co-host. Her name is Sarah <laughs> Peraria. We chat every Tuesday and Wednesday here on Fast Money Football. But let's get right into it. Newcastle, Everton. To me, the biggest game of the week. I mean, this is a bottom of the table battle. Everton, obviously, they need to win here to obviously bridge the gap between them and the bottom three. Newcastle, if they win, they're within a point of Everton. They really drag them right in. And then right after that, if that happens, all the pressure on Frank Lampard. How do you see this match playing out? You know what? We spoke a bit about this before we got on the show, but I don't know where to go with this one. This is going to be tight. Yeah. It's really it's really interesting because, like, yeah, like you said, like Everton, who would have thought that they – would be, you know, fighting to stay in the Premier League. They're such a notorious team. They're usually such like a, a maybe not a top four, but like a top seven, top eight, you know, definitely yep. a mid-table team, but always competitive. And now, you know, they're 16th, like you said, Newcastle 19th. And Everton only has two wins in their last five matches. Newcastle has one, like they're so similar in the way they've been playing. So I don't know, maybe the fact that Everton has, like you said, Frank Lampard, new coach. They've made a couple big moves over the, you know, transfer break, but I don't know. It doesn't I have no confidence still. I mean, everybody is saying, including myself, and I think you said it as well, that Everton have just too much quality to be battling at the bottom of the table in the Premier League and they should be able to get themselves out of it. And I absolutely believe that, but I mean, in a big match like this, if you lose it, you're right in it. And now the pressure is really on a new manager. And like you mentioned, new signings. Same thing for Newcastle. Both teams made so many different signings. So there's so many unknowns revolving around these starting 11s that, I mean, it takes time for players to adjust to the Premier League. We've seen that time and time again. You know, I always go back to, you know, Hakim Ziyech with Chelsea. He's such a good player. And it's taken him, you know, over a season and a half just to get used to the league. And now he's starting to kick off. And Newcastle, you know, they brought in, what, four players? Kieran Trippia. Chris Wood, who's already played in the Premier League, obviously he's been playing for Burnley, uh, Bruno Guimarães, and then Matt Target on loan. These players, yes, some of them have been in the Premier League, but they still need time to gel. And when you're in the heat of it, the heat of a relegation battle, it might not be the right time. So either way, I can see both teams struggling. But to me, this is a must win. I think both teams will come out to score. I see goals in this one. But I'm like you, sir. I think this is a complete pass in terms of betting. Yeah, no, I would 100% stay away from this. One thing I just wanted to touch on when you brought up transfers and, you know, a new manager, I don't know, I, uh, I'm i not confident with Frank Lampard whatsoever. I really? When they when they made this, uh, this move, I was thinking, you know, doesn't have a ton of experience. His experience is absolutely failing at Chelsea. You know, there are certain coaches like you see with Steven Gerrard and Aston Villa or Xavi with Barcelona. Both of these, you know, ex-footballers went to lower level teams, you know, worked there for a while, kind of built up their repertoire as a coach and then kind of came into the bigger leagues. But I don't know, Frank Lampard, I'm like, you, what have you really done? I, I'm not confident with him as a coach and not to take away from him as a player, but as a coach, he hasn't proved anything to me. So I don't know if this is a good move for Everton in general. So even though they made all these transfers, I'm, I'm a bit worried about them, honestly. Like I actually thought once they signed Frankie that they were going to for sure get relegated because I don't think he has enough experience. Yeah, I could know, be wrong. <laughs> he, he did a decent job at Derby taking him to the uh, playoff spot. And then at Chelsea, um, you know, took him to a couple of finals. He, he was okay. But yes, I don't know if he has the experience for this type of uh, situation that Liverton are currently in, especially now. Not only do you have to get him out of this position that they're in at the table, but you have to right the ship. And so many managers before him have come into Everton and they've been un unable to do that. I mean, Ancelotti, he's coming. If he can't do it, how can Frank Lampard do it? But that's going to yeah. be the question that's going to always revolve around him. Uh, one concern with Frank Lampard and Frank Lampard teams is conceding goals. And this Everton, Everton side have also been conceding goals. Listen to this one, Sarah. In the, in the last nine games, they've conceded the first goal. So that's 
I don't want to bet on this game, but if you're looking for a little bit of a prop, Newcastle to score first at plus 110. Yes, new manager, a new system, but the same players making the same mistakes, and I expect Newcastle to come out on top. I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah, you know what? I like that prop that you just said. I think that that would be my safest bet because otherwise I couldn't tell you. I, I, would say, <laughs> I would stay far away from this. Yeah. Watch it. Watch it for fun football and good football, hopefully. But I don't know if I, I put my money there. <laughs> yeah, I think this is going to be one of the most entertaining games. And I just give the edge slightly to Newcastle. Being at St. James's Park under the floodlights, new signings, new manager. There's, there's a little bit of hope there for Newcastle. And I think that's really going to help them in this match. But let's move on to the next one here. West Ham against Watford. West Ham, massive favorites here. Minus 230 against Watford. I don't like West Ham at this price. I do like them in this matchup. But I think I'm going to lean more towards goals here. I just, I mean, they should win the game, but you never know Watford. They just got Roy Hodgson, new manager who's come in and clean sheet in the first game. It's been, listen to this, Watford's first clean sheet in 31 Premier League games. He comes in and gets it done. I mean, it was against Burnley, a team that can't score. But that's one thing that these managers do when they first come in. They start at the back. They start building that defense. They put the emphasis on that. So you're going to see probably a better Watford side defensively, but I still think they can score in this matchup. I mean, yeah, I'd like to hope so as well. But I also, I do understand the reasoning why West Ham is just so favored simply because, you know, they're just, you know, look at the placement in the table. It's fifth place versus 18th. West Ham is just doing better overall. Their team is, you know, they have way more talent on the team. Everyone's back now from international break, which is huge. And, you know, AFCON finished. So I don't know. I, I, maybe we could see, you know, Wofford putting a goal, but like, I don't think they're going to win this game. And I, I would say it's safe to actually take West Ham. My official pick, I'm going to go West Ham to win. I want to juice up those odds. So I'm going to go with both teams to score a plus 205. Listen to this. Both teams to score has hit in four out of the last six games away from home for Watford. So I'm expecting a big win for West Ham, but also Watford to uh, potentially get a goal here. What's your pick? Yeah, no, I like that a lot. You know, I was going through uh, previous scores for um, West Ham, and I was thinking, you know, maybe put some money on uh, Mihel Antonio. But I don't know. that. <sighs> West Ham has also really pissed me off this season. <laughs> they started off so well. And I think I would just, yeah, I would take them to win. And yeah, if you like it, put both teams to score. But I'm not going to choose a goal scorer for this game. I think it's a little too risky. Manchester United head to Turf Moor. Always a tough place to play uh, at Burnley. But they've done pretty well there. Uh, last four games, four clean sheets, four wins. But they're coming off a tough loss in the FA Cup to Middlesbrough. Championship side, Middlesbrough. They lost in penalties. They were bounced out. Yet another stain on this Manchester United team uh, under Ralph Rennick. They've been pretty good in the Premier League, but something is just not right there with Manchester United. How do you see this one playing out? I I see Manchester United winning this game as much as it pains me to say it, but (laughs) can we first of all give some credit to Middlesbrough because what a match that was. I was, I was living for all of it. Honestly, like it was just so exciting and, I, the fans that were there too, like it was, oh, it was just, it was really like, you know, the underdogs when they win, like it's so good for them. But yeah, I don't know what happened to United. Like, I mean, it went to penalties, but it shouldn't have. Like, they, they should have won this game. And that's like the concern, you know? I mean, we can talk about Ronaldo missing a penalty, but it happens. Like, I wouldn't blame it on that. You know, this team should have beat Middlesbrough. They're way, but they, they are way better. So, I don't know. I think it's tricky for them. But looking ahead to this game against Burnley, Manchester should win. It's fourth versus last. Like, you know, we we have one of the best players on this team. They're managing to score. They're doing – David De Gea in the back has saved this team time and time again. I don't think that they are going to lose this game. In fact, I think they need to win this game. Mm -hmm. But just to bounce back from that loss. But, yeah, there's such a – I don't know what's going on with this team. I also think Rangnick still hasn't – fully clicked yet and it takes time yeah yeah united there's an issue scoring there as well i mean in that middlesbrough game they probably could have finished it to be honest in the first half of the Mm -hmm. chances that they had you go back to the bruno fernandez chance when he had an empty net and he hit the post but look united they've only scored more than once in what three of ranik's 11 matches in charge and you think with that quality that they have rashford ronaldo fernandez cavani I mean, it just goes on. Even Fred, you you can throw Fred in there. He does score some goals here and there. McTominay McTominay, uh, uh, jumps in with a goal from time to time. Maguire from set pieces. And now they have 
uh, Rafael Varane, who's also a threat from set pieces. So they have the quality to score goals. It's just not clicking at the moment. And they're going to take on this Burnley side. Yes, one of the bottom uh, three teams in the Premier League, but still very good defensive team. Playing away at Burnley is always difficult. Um, and like I mentioned, these games usually stay under the number. I think under two and a half in the last four or five games between these two. So it's going to be another tough game. I would back Manchester United, but I think I'm going to go with the total instead. Under two and a half goals at plus 100, Sarah. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, listen, Burnley also haven't won any of their last five matches, though, either. So yeah. I feel like they're, yeah, like going for United is definitely the the safer choice and probably the better choice. I, like they should win. This should be this should be a Manchester United win. There shouldn't be a conversation here. I don't know. But um, I just was thinking about this as you were talking about it. Is it is it possible that with everything going on with Manchester United since Ole got sacked and they were really, you know, miserable and then a new coach coming in and then all this controversy and horrible news that, you know, has come out with Mason Greenwood. Isn't that just like all the locker room issues are coming out onto the pitch? Cause they have really as a team been kind of going through this, you know, roller coaster. Yeah. I mean, it's been an ongoing situation in every part. I think of that football mm -hmm. club from the top to the bottom, we, we go back to the super league and how the fans want Woodward out, who's the you know the chairman of Manchester United. Then it goes back to the fans wanting Ole Gunnar Solskjaer out, and then Ranier coming in. And if you really think about it, has much really changed? Yeah. Since Ole Gunnar Solskjaer came in. Yeah. Okay. Some results. You know, they're the top four at the moment, but nothing really has changed. I'm not sure if this is going to be Ranier's job until the end. I think it sounds like Mauricio Pochettino is the guy to come in, and maybe that's what Manchester United need. They need a really new a new face in there who's going to come in um, and, and do good things. As we saw at Spurs, he's a, he's a manager that they wanted uh, prior to the move to PSG. So I think what's going to happen, I think Granjic has it till the end of the season. They bring Poch in. Maybe Granjic stays on as some sort of director or whatnot, and they begin that new era under Pochettino. But, I mean, who knows with this team? Well, I hope so, because I'd love Pochettino to leave PSG because he has no idea what he's doing there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's tough. There's a lot of pressure. It's boom or bust. I mean, that is probably the only job – uh, maybe outside of Manchester City, where it's Champions League or nothing. Like, yeah. If you don't win the yeah, Champions exactly. League, you're out of a job. Because think about who he has there. I mean, we mentioned all the time, Di Maria, Mbappe, Neymar, Messi. So if you, if, if you don't win the big titles, and then it, it's over. So I don't expect him to stay there very long. I think it was mm -hmm. the dream for him to get that job. But I think the move for him and for Manchester United is to really start and build behind him. And I think that's the best way to get Manchester United back to the top. I like it. Honestly, I can see that move like happening for sure. I yeah. think it would actually be a really good fit. So, and, and what's great with Pochettino and Manchester United obviously love this because they did it under Sir Alex Ferguson is youth. He's mm -hmm. so good with them. Look what he did at Spurs with Harry Winks, Deli Alley, Harry Kane. And when Sun came in, he's really good with these youth players. He turned Eric Dyer into, <laughs> an, English, into an England international, Danny Rose, Kyle Walker. So yeah. now you bring that to United, and I think you're getting back to what they really want. They want some sort of uh, resemblance of to, to what Sir Alex Ferguson did. So, I mean, I'm talking a lot about United right now, but <laughs> it'd be good for English football. It'd be good for the Premier League if they were back yeah. on top again. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, we'll see what happens. But in terms of today, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm taking Man United for the win. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, see them, I, I see them needing to win this game just to bounce back, and I think they absolutely should win this game. Okay, so we're both going for a pass on the Newcastle Everton game, but we do, well, at least I like a prop. A Newcastle to score first at even money. I'm going West Ham plus both teams to score plus 205. And then the under two and a half in the United Burnley game. Sarah, go over your picks one more time. Yeah, I'm not touching Newcastle and Everton. Best of luck to everyone out there. I'm going to take <laughs> West Ham over Watford and Manchester United over Burnley. All right, well, that's it for Fast Money Football. You can follow her at Sarah Peraria on Twitter. You can follow me. At the real Bert V. And if you want to watch more parlay content, follow us at the parlay and head over to parlay.tv. Thanks for watching.